So welcome to Engaging and Empowering School Libraries, a podcast that aims to raise the profile of school libraries by talking about topics that are current across education and teaching. Today, though, we're going to take a look inside my membership. Um, the idea is to have a series of podcasts where it gives you a glimpse of what being part of my membership is a bit like, um, talking to members about their role within school librarianship and how they came to find me, but most of all, looking at their own personal achievements and celebrating in their successes. Our first up is Rachel Huskisson, who is a founder of member, uh, um, founder member of Engaging and Empowering School Libraries, one of the person people that, that jumped on <laughs> as soon as I had set myself up. We had um, been talking to each other, Rachel, hadn't we, before you joined, well, before my membership was even set up. So we had sort of worked together a little bit through my training, hadn't we? Um, during lockdown, was it when you first started coming in and joining yeah. in? Yeah, that's right. Um, I, think so. I think I first came across you when I, I was looking at one of your sessions and I thought, oh, that looks interesting. And I think I signed up just for the individual session. Yeah. Um, and got a lot out of it. And I'll talk about that, I'm sure. In a um, minute. Yeah. yeah. It was a while ago. So, so give me a little bit of a background on your school library journey, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm actually a scientist <laughs> originally. Um, uh, you might not know that. I did a no, I don't know that. <laughs> And I worked in the, the labs at the local hospital uh, when I came out of uni. And then I, we started a family and I was able to and chose to stay at home with the kids. So fast forward 15 years, I don't think I planned it to be that long, but I had four children and, you know, that's how life goes. Um, I was starting to think, I want to go back into paid employment. What am I going to do? And just at that time, I was visiting my local public library, which I was a regular visitor to with my children. Um, and the librarian said to me, oh, Rachel, we've got some relief library assistant jobs going you'd be brilliant have you thought about it so oh. I thought oh actually this could really work because it, it was flexible enough that I could fit it around the family and sort of do as many hours of, as I wanted um it was a sort of zero hours arrangement but yeah. I got lots of work and I was able to work in different libraries around the area so it gave me a really good sort of insight into what was involved and um, and I did that for a year um, and I, I loved being in the library. I, I always been a big like library lover, I suppose, believe mm -hmm. in the, the power of that. Um, but it got to the point where I needed regular hours because yeah. it just, you know, it, it, it fits better with a family if you can plan ahead a little bit. And if so, you know what you're doing, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, so as much as I was enjoying that, and I was also, if I'm honest, I wanted something a bit more challenging because I kind of got my head around the basics and there weren't opportunities really to kind of move up in that, in those settings. So I saw a job in a school library as a library assistant and I thought, ah. And I'm sure a lot of... Um, Mums probably think the same. This will yeah, work well with yeah. the kids' <laughs> school holiday. Yeah. Um, so I applied for that and I got the job. So that was in 2016. So I've been in school libraries for coming up, oh, just, yeah, nine years. Um, and I worked as an assistant. There were two assistants and the librarian who was our boss, uh, which is very rare actually now. But, um, that was, was that a state school was it it was a state school um it had become an academy but sue the librarian had been there quite a long time um i think 16 years when i arrived and she you know really built up a, an amazing library setting and yeah it had been well supported in the past i think when i joined things were starting to go on the wane I guess um but we were we were a great team and I, I loved being part of that little team um and me and the the other assistant actually overlapped one day a week so we we all got to work together quite closely mm. uh, it was a big state school in quite a deprived area a lot of challenging behavior 
Um, but yeah, I loved loved being part of that team. So that's yeah. where I started. Wow. So um, so you then presumably moved on because at what point did you move on from that school to another? You became head of the library yeah. at that, in that same school. No, different schools. So okay. what happened was my boss. Dis- I think she saw the writing on the wall with the school. It it was struggling. Um, right. Our budgets had been cut to absolutely nothing and we were about to become absorbed into another academy so there was a lot of kind of in limbo situation where nothing was happening and this was 2019 she retired in Chris at Christmas 2019 mm. and to be honest it was my my colleague the other assistant and I lasted till February half term right before both handed our notice in because right. it was just awful we were completely left on our own no line manager no communication no here's the plan like our boss wasn't replaced yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. and we were left floundering basically um and so by February half term 2020 that might that that infamous good, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we both handed our notices in uh, yeah. My colleague had another job, so she just got more hours at the university library where she was working. And I just stopped because I was like, this is not doing me any good. I just need to get out and take a break. Not And, and actually thinking I wouldn't stay in school libraries because it would it had really put me off the way I'd been sort of treated. Yeah. And about two weeks into my notice period, um, we went into lockdown. So yeah, we did. Just, um, <laughs> <laughs> interesting so I suddenly found myself um without a job in lockdown thinking oh I didn't have this in mind but no. it, in some ways it was good timing because I was able to be at home with my youngest who was in year six so he was doing homeschooling um I could really get some headspace think about what I wanted to do next um I, I looked into other things I had two interviews in what what you might have heard of social prescribing all right okay yeah so completely different and then a friend of mine who was working in a school in derby said our librarians and she she'd actually told me this a few months before our librarians retiring um is that something you'd be interested in our head would love to talk to you and I was like "Mm, no I don't think so (laughs) (laughs) anyway by the summer I'd kind of thought well it sounds like a very different school yeah um I and and I kind of thought well I'll I'll go and have a chat and see what's what and it and and then I thought well there'll be opportunities there so let's go and see and so I had a chat um it was yeah I'm not quite sure anyway let let's just fast forward I got the job (laughs) yes so that was running the library in a very small independent school um of about 300 students in the secondary department so on my own solo librarian so that started in September 2020 after all the schools had been closed for four or five months so I went into a very strange situation where people were very fearful still it was all masks keeping everyone at distance so it was a hard kind of way to come into a new school yeah yeah. yeah because because meeting people yeah face, really face generally yeah. seeing their faces helps doesn't it yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I didn't see my line manager's face for about six months <laughs> always, yeah. yeah and you know all of those things change your perspective on people and uh, relationships and and everything doesn't it so you know even relationships with the students must have been a bit strange at that point yeah very much and there were bubbles and you know um kind of rotors for different groups coming in and lunchtime so yeah it was and uh, uh, the other difficulty I think because the previous librarian had already left I didn't get a handover so I mean I met her very briefly and she gave me the login <laughs> I was like there you go wow. so it was a really steep learning curve like um and I think that's probably the time when I was Googling help. <laughs> like I, the school felt like 
obviously they'd employ me. She's worked at a school library before. She knows what she's doing. I felt like I have not run a library. I do not know what I'm doing, but I want to learn. And I think that was the thing I, I thought, well, the school don't know really how to support me, but they're, they, they were very, they were supportive in that. They said, if there's any training you need or want, let us know and we'll, you know, support you. So yeah. I did, I obviously signed up to everything I could. Um, because um, that was the same time. So beginning, so my route into all of this was, was I left school's library service in 2019 expecting right. to go and do face-to-face training and I did a couple with the SLA and thought you know you know when you're in transition you're not quite sure whether it's what you really want to do or not and I think that's a bit what you were saying um you know that face-to-face training was like yes I love this this is great you know a big group of school librarians all together for the day us being able to sort of share and interact and you know me give them ideas and you know lovely brilliant and then of course 2020 hit and at that point, it was like, okay, well, do you just sit tight and walk away for, you know, it's like, a, we don't know how long, do we? Um, and it was sort of my launch into this online training world. It doesn't um, surprise me because that's that was all that was available. And, and for me, like timing wise, there was suddenly so much online training. It was almost overwhelming. Overwhelming, but it was. Be- yeah. Before, I wouldn't have had access to any of that because no. it just didn't exist. So... <laughs> I was able to actually kind of access all those lots and lots of stuff. things that yeah, and not yeah. for an expensive price. Most a lot of it was free. Yeah. So. yeah. So so funnily enough, when the schools went back in that September, properly, was it twenty twenty one? Did they go back? Because I, I think, think it was still, it was twenty twenty. I yeah. that's when I started. I went yeah. back until Christmas, and then I got furloughed. <laughs> yeah. So I started the job. I did four months. Was just finding my feet, um, and then I got furloughed till the March. So we had another lockdown then. March twenty one was one, when. Yeah, yeah. So this was the thing for me is that by September twenty twenty one, people had gone back to work. School libraries yeah. had gone back to work. It was you know life was not quite back to normal but but you know we'd gone almost reversed back to that um you know there's no time there's no money um I don't want to do it in the holidays you know I don't want to do it in my own time school aren't giving me time Mm. you know so if you're somebody like me who's providing training when where do you how do you continue that it's it's Mm. virtually impossible which is why January 2022 then my membership started because I thought actually if people if I can offer six training sessions live training sessions a year that you either turn up to if you can or um you know sign up and have the recording then then you know that then gives people the flexibility of to doing it whenever they can um and I think you know we said right at the beginning that you were a founder member of that so explain to me Rachel why what was it that made you join my membership so I think I had been following you for a while and you obviously give out lots of freebies as well you're very generous (laughs) so um that came around the time I'd been in my job a year and I decided that I was going to explore doing chartership as a way of getting filling in some of the skills and knowledge gaps that I felt I had um particularly in my setting it was quite an academic school and I didn't feel confident with some of the information literacy side of things um the running of the library and the management side of things I was getting my head around more and the SLA were great with supporting that but As I, around Christmas 2021, going into 22 is when I signed up for chartership. And what I was seeing with your membership, which was obviously just coming around then, was that it was all really closely tied into the chartership, the PKSB, which is, I can't remember what it stands for, (laughs) knowledge base, Base, professional knowledge base that you have to kind of show that you're learning about. So your training I guess tied in quite closely with that and I thought oh yeah this this could be this could 
tick some of those boxes, but also <laughs> fill that gap that I felt I had around, particularly the information literacy, inquiry learning, that kind of thing, um, which I thought would be really valuable in the school I was in because of the kind of school it was. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's when I signed up for one session just to try it out. Yeah. <clears throat> and I remember it was on um, writing your annual, annual report, I think. Right. <laughs> so, and you were very good because you, you kind of gave us some homework and <laughs> sort of, I, I think what I liked about it was it, there was a bit of accountability. It wasn't pushy, but there was like, do this and then get back to me and we'll because it was in a little group and a forum like um you could sort of communicate with each other and share what you'd done um I just found that really helpful and so by the summer there was a little bit of money left in my budget and so I thought I'll sign up for the membership for the year because I think it'd be great for the as I do the chartership so that is when I think it was that summer that I probably joined properly okay. but I've been you know basically following you not From the beginning. <laughs> for a while yeah <laughs> um so it, it's really interesting talking to somebody that actually has attended my training and you know that little bit of accountability and stuff is is part of what I enjoy I think I, I one of the reasons that I set it up was about the fact that you tend to go to training don't you and or watch a webinar and you think, oh, I'm all fired up. That's great. I can go and, you know, go and try that. And when you get back to work, it's like, oh, I'm not so sure how that works or that didn't work how I thought or that was amazing. It worked really well, but you've got no one to share it with. Mm -hmm. And actually that forum side of the membership is something that's really important to me. The fact that you have got a space to come back to, to go, actually, this didn't work or this did work, but I would like to try something different. And actually... The, the nice thing is it's not just my voice because it's a membership. All the people that are on the membership can actually read those comments that you make and actually can help push you forward. I need people to be a little bit less frightened of doing that, but, but I think it's coming, do you know? I think it's not something that we do normally. So therefore, a bit like our own students, it's, it's a scary thing to do to start with. But actually, once you've done it once or twice, it actually, oh, this is all right, this works, you know? Yeah. Can you can you just explain a little bit more about what you've got out of it in the in the you know the couple of years that you've been with me? Yeah, um, I think it, it's been interesting because I've just come up back off a holiday, so you you tend to reflect a bit when you're away, don't you? And sort of looking back, I think a lot of it was around confidence. So I sort of stepped into this role with not a lot of confidence in my own ability at all, um, but, but passionate about what I was doing. Um, and I think what it helped me do was, um, it gave me the tools to kind of be able to talk to senior leaders a bit more because I didn't feel like I'd, I didn't necessarily have like um, a place at the table as it were, but being part of the membership, talking to other librarians who had been doing it a lot longer than me, um, getting advice, because there were particular situations and every school is so unique, isn't it? And every school library position, you often end up with extra roles and, you know, mine was no different. And there were aspects that I needed to go and talk to senior leaders about and ask, you know, for changes and things like that, which... I didn't feel confident doing at first, but through being part of the membership, through talking to you, amazing, like, you know, you're always at the end of an email and I can yeah. just say, oh, this is going on. What do you think I should do? And, you know, I, I, I think I your advice, <laughs> but I did. <laughs> um, I, so I, think really I, I think I remember you wanting to write some kind of report at some point. And, and you asking me just to look through it for you before you sent it off. Do you know, I think that that be, having that sort of awareness of the fact that there's somebody there that you can just, mm. you know, touch base with when, you, when you're unsure is is an important part of, of what I do. You know, and yeah. I think that that's the, the personal connection just makes a huge difference, doesn't it? Because you actually know who you're talking to. You know who yeah. you're asking. You've seen me and talked to me in the training that actually when you know genuinely if you know 
I'm saying I can't give you the answer that you know that that's true but yeah. but I hope that I try and push you in the right direction to somebody that can is the other bit that goes with that isn't it you know yeah, definitely and also encouraging your members or me particularly to, to be a bit braver and yeah. sort of push yourself out of your comfort zone it's very easy to kind of not do that when you've got no one you literally working on your own you've got no one saying you know maybe just go and have a chat with that person or do this do that and so that was really helpful I think um definitely and it, it gave me the confidence to speak up when I perhaps wouldn't have done in the past and I've learned a lot from that I can I can see the growth Rachel yeah. You know, and it's it's funny there are other members who join me and they were so quiet at the beginning you'd be in a you'd be in a group of not very many as it's usually under 10 librarians getting together and some of them just really can't talk they can't you know voice their opinion and then by the end of you know a couple of years it's like wow did that person really say that <laughs> it's like it's, they're almost mentoring each other yeah you know? they you know listening to you now talk in a group it is great because because of your experience and your understanding you are now able to share back with others which is what is, is the evolving nature yeah. of the membership which I hadn't really sort of thought about at the beginning which is which is a good one though isn't it so I'm going to ask the questions in a different way around let's start with what's happening next for you and what have what are you achieving something exciting has happened hasn't it Very exciting. <laughs> so um I've got a new job so wow. um starting tomorrow <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be uh, running the libraries at my local further education college so oh, yeah so I'm leaving school libraries which is really sad um, but there's a real link though isn't there, there between is a link. yeah yeah and um yeah it was time I think I uh, yeah I mean I'd, I'd done four years where I was and it was great. The students were amazing. I think I'd, I'd made a lot of changes to the library, which I was really pleased with. Um, but it was just getting to the point where I felt like I'd kind of done everything I could and I'd, I'd explored ways of developing it. And the school just didn't seem to, didn't need that or want it at the time. So at that point, this is a year ago, I signed up to do a master's distance learning um, with the idea of thinking, well, that might open some other doors. I think where I am geographically in the country, there aren't a lot of school library jobs around that come up. Yeah. So yeah. I, my thinking was, well, if I do the master's, it might give me some ways into the wider sector um, if the school library jobs don't come up yeah, <laughs> and then so my my in my mind I was thinking well I'll complete the masters which I will do next summer and then I'll start looking to move but I was keeping half an eye on what was around and I saw this job and I thought oh that looks really interesting these jobs don't come up very often no. um, so I'll just apply thinking I wouldn't get it <laughs> there we are. Here you go yeah. <laughs> yeah it's really exciting yeah but your background your fascination in school libraries is is going to be huge um being able to come into a job like that though isn't it yeah. because without, without that background and understanding it it you know college libraries are very similar to to school libraries um you know almost brother and sister aren't they yeah. is the, is the, is the a good relationship team. you've just yeah. got older students haven't you yeah yeah you know so hopefully hopefully oh well good luck <laughs> but it's so much bigger I think that's the daunting thing so I've gone from a school which is age three to 18 with 600 students to a college where they serve 13,000 students <laughs> wow wow um, yeah. So, yeah, it's... yeah a few staff to look after then yeah over a thousand members of staff I think <laughs> Yeah. And what about your department then? How many staff yeah, are in? So um, there are 10 of us. Okay. There are um, eight library assistants and then two library coordinators. So there are four sites and 
each of the library coordinators looks after two sites each and I will sit over them and so yeah. man management and all of that <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a very different job but um, Absolutely. I'm looking forward to being part of a team again I think I really miss that from my previous school and yeah. um everyone I've met so far has been lovely and it I had a good feeling when I went and the librarian who's leaving is retiring after 30 years wow. and she said to me it's a really well-run library um every, you know don't feel like you've got to come in and start you'll obviously want to make your stamp but nothing needs changing like it runs well so and the team will you know really help you find your feet so yeah Fantastic. okay so let's wrap this up then Rachel <laughs> um <sighs> Tell the people listening, hopefully people are still listening by at this point, but yeah. tell them why you think they should join my membership if they're thinking about it. Yeah, so first of all, I think it's fantastic value for money to get six sessions throughout the year and everything else. Um, you've got to complete access to this members forum. There's loads of different threads you can explore um there's, there's people in the membership who aren't necessarily just from this country is that right yeah, that's right yeah yeah we've got so that gives you another sort of insight into what's going on internationally um it's also really good for keeping you up to date with current trends i think especially stuff around ai uh, which is elizabeth's really good at kind of picking out um current stuff that's going on and putting it on their little articles and all sorts so and I think that really helped in my interview um I was able to kind of refer to some of that um so yeah I think if you're looking for something that especially in the information literacy inquiry learning side which I think complements the reading for pleasure which is where a lot of the emphasis in school libraries is and you, and you want to explore librarianship that goes a bit beyond that it's a really good thing to be part of um and i would definitely recommend it oh thank you so much <laughs> that was well said thank you um just while i've got the chance um i'm heading very close to 50 members which is incredible after only being open two years um uh, my 50th member will be entitled to a free one-to-one -one with me so if you've got a problem or an issue or something you'd like to chat through with me then then if you are my 50th member you will get a free one-to-one -one, which is worth 40 pounds so not to be sniffed at i don't think um i will post something up more about that in the um comment in the thread below but but hopefully this has given you a little bit of an insight into what being a member of engaging and empowering school libraries is all about. Thanks very much for listening. <laughs>